Hello, my name's Emily, and I was recently given the brilliant job of going through the Blackpool Tower Circus archives, old posters and photographs and newspaper clippings, in search of stories to share with you. But sometimes the things we're looking for are found in unexpected places. One day, I was looking at old photographs of horses and clowns and jugglers when my belly rumbled. Lunchtime. I came to a cafe. On the table next to me sat an old lady. She looked at me and smiled, and her face danced with wrinkles. I found myself wondering how old she might be. When she turned to me and said, I'll be 94 next week, dear. 94, I said, so, so you were born in uh, 1925. I asked her, have you always lived in Blackpool? Oh, I don't live here, dear. I just come on holiday. I've been coming ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> and then I asked her, did you ever go to the circus? And her eyes lit up. Let me tell you a story, dear. Many, many years ago, a girl, she must have been around 10 years old. She got off the bus with her father. It was getting dark. It was raining and it was cold, but something bright caught her eye. Posters. Posters that read, Tommy Kays and his bouncing lions. <laughs> Ivana the Fearless. The Chinese Hair Raisers. Coringa. Tower Circus. Daily. 2.30 and 7.30. Come on, Mary, you'll catch your death, said her father. But Mary couldn't forget what she'd seen. Bouncing lions, hair raisers, clowns, fearless women, such strange things. She pestered and pestered and pestered and pestered until finally her father gave in. And the next evening she dragged him down the blustery promenade all the way to the tower where they bought their tickets. They followed a big group of adults and children into a magnificent hallway, shining like the moon. The crowds were like a river, gently pushing them along. And they found themselves in a foyer now, with a ceiling like a dome full of lights twinkling like little stars. And finally, the doors opened and they flooded into the circus itself. There was the ring and benches upon benches, a gallery with more seats, and a high golden ceiling. There was the smell of muck and animals and sweat. It was noisy as the excited audience settled themselves down. They took off their overcoats and waited. The orchestra filed in. They picked up their instruments, trumpets, trombones, bells and drums, and the music began. It was loud and exciting. And then the red curtains swished open and into the ring stepped the ringmaster in his long coat and his shining black top hat. He held a whip in one hand. He cracked it against the ground and it sounded like gunshot, making Mary jump. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Blackpool Tower Circus. You will see tonight the most extraordinary feats of human nature. You will laugh, you will cry, you will remember this experience for the rest of your lives. Now, put your hands together and welcome into the ring the Medrano Sisters. And into the ring burst three galloping horses decorated with sequins and feathers and standing on their backs, three shining women. And they leapt up into the air, they somersaulted, they jumped from horse to horse, they climbed onto each other's shoulders. They even swung themselves under the bellies of the horses. It was stunning. There was a drum roll then, and the ringmaster welcomed into the ring Captain Tommy Kays and his bouncing lions. The lights dimmed, and into the ring was pushed a kind of cage on wheels, and inside were three lions. Captain Tommy Kays, the lion tamer, he slipped into the cage and quickly locked the door behind him. He cracked his whip, 
and the lions began to move around him, running faster and faster and faster until they were jumping up onto the sides of the cage, looking like they were bouncing. And then, when they were so fast they were almost a blur, he cracked the whip again and the lion skidded to a halt. One of the lions opened its mouth so wide you could see down its throat. And then the lion tamer slowly put his head into the lion's mouth, in between its sharp, white teeth. Mary couldn't believe somebody could be so brave. Or was it just stupid? After the lions came six beautiful elephants. They balanced on tiny little stools. They caught colourful balls on their trunks. They pretended to nearly crush somebody lying on the ground. Mary wondered if these elephants were enjoying themselves as much as the audience was enjoying it. Was this fun for them? Twice a day, performing these tricks in front of all of these people. Were they happy? And what about the lions? Did they enjoy all of this or did they dream of running wild and free instead? Next came a strange mystical woman in long dark robes called Karinga who hypnotised real-life crocodiles. And then little dogs performing tricks and tightrope walkers and trapeze artists like birds soaring in the sky. And then came Mary's favourite, a little clown called Doodles, who had everybody in hysterics. At one point, the ringmaster, George Lockhart, came and told him that his time was up. But Doodles refused to leave, and so the ringmaster pretended to give him the sack, and they had a silly argument. And then Doodles took his whip and his top hat and strutted around the stage, pretending to be the ringmaster himself. Even Mary's dad was crying with laughter. Finally, the grand finale. There was the sound of creaking machinery and gushing water. In just a couple of minutes, the whole of the ring was filled with water. There was a flash of lights and music, and then maybe 50 men and women, all dressed in exotic clothes and sparkling headdresses, appeared. And they leapt into the water, and they were diving through the fountains like flying fish. It was mesmerizing. It was the most wonderful thing that Mary had ever seen. Far too soon, it was the end. The performers were all waving goodbye. They disappeared, the lights came on, the music was gone. Everyone was chattering and putting on their coats. Come on, Trouble, said Mary's dad. Time to go. But Mary couldn't leave. Not yet. Instead, she squeezed in underneath her seat. There was just about enough space to hide here. She watched all the legs passing by. She listened to the sound of the chattering, the nattering, the footsteps disappear until it was silent. She was about to step out then when she heard a voice that she recognised. This way, lads, that table there, sandwiches and cakes on that one. Now, where are those pork pies? It was George Lockhart, the ringmaster. Come on, everyone, pile your plates high. And into the ring poured men and women. Lots that Mary recognised, some that she didn't. There was Doodles, the clown, still with his makeup on. The three Madrano sisters still in their sparkling clothes. Trapeze artists wearing their normal clothes now, looking almost like ordinary people. There was the lion tamer, there was the elephant tamer. They piled their plates high with food, they sat down around the ring and relaxed, talking and laughing. Quiet, please, said Lockhart. This is our last night together before our season ends tomorrow, and I'd like to say a few words. My father was a ringmaster before me. I stepped into the ring when I was just a lad. The circus has always been my home. We here are from all over the world. Many of us don't even understand each other's languages, but still we are a family. We work together, we look after each other, we care for each other just as families do. I am so proud of what we've achieved here in Blackpool. This must be the best circus in the whole world. But it wouldn't be possible without every single one of you. Not just you performers, but those of you who set up the stage every night, who check every rope and wire, who clean and scrub, who feed the animals, who mend the costumes and cook and clean. 
we should all be proud of what we have achieved. And so tomorrow we will say goodbye to many of you who are moving on to join other circuses in Paris and Denmark, Copenhagen and Brussels. And everyone began to clap and to cheer and Mary completely forgot where she was. She jumped up and she was clapping and cheering too and then everyone in the ring fell silent and they looked up at this little girl standing there all by herself. Oh, sorry, she said. I'm terribly sorry. Well, don't just stand there, said Lockhart. Come and join us. There's cake to be eaten. And Doodles jumped over the ring, climbed over the benches, bowed down, took her hand and led her down into the ring. Chocolate or coffee and walnut, he asked. Oh, um, chocolate, please. <laughs> and he reached behind her head and pulled out a great big slice of chocolate cake. How did you... <laughs> Thank you, said Mary. Have you always been a clown? asked Mary. I joined the circus in Glasgow when I was just young, he said. But in those days, I was William, not Doodles. I was an excellent gymnast and high wire walker by the time I was your age. Uh, but one day, I forgot to check my safety harness and I was practicing high up. <laughs> it was like walking in the stars, but uh, I fell. I broke my leg in six places. The doctor said I would never walk again. Well, luckily, I proved them wrong, that my days as a gymnast were well and truly over. But by then, I belonged in the circus. I couldn't leave. And so I stayed. I liked playing around with the clowns. I liked learning their tricks. I liked making people laugh. I got good at it. And one day, I sat in front of the mirror, and I painted my face, and I gave myself a new name. Doodle, said Mary. That's right. And I've been here working at Blackpool Tower Circus for the last 20 years. Suddenly, a voice called from beyond the ring. Mary, that's where you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Standing by the doors was Mary's father. Mary quickly hugged Doodles goodbye. Don't forget your cake, he said, and wrapped it in a white handkerchief carefully embroidered with the letter D. Thank you, she said. She shook hands with Lockhart then, the ringmaster. Do come and visit us when you're next in town, he said. I will, she said, I promise. And then she took her father's hand. She waved goodbye to everybody else in the ring and off they went, out of the circus, out into the cold, fresh sea air. That was the best day of my life. The old woman went quiet then. She finished her lunch and ordered two pieces of chocolate cake. One she gave to me and the other she wrapped in a white handkerchief and popped into her handbag. For my journey home, dear. I noticed that the handkerchief had a little D embroidered in the corner. Then she got up to go. But, but wait, I said, oh, thank you, but tell me, how did you know that story? And she smiled and said, I think you know that, dear. And then she was gone, and you know, I realized that I did know exactly how she knew that story. And I've got a feeling that you know too.